a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Sonia Sotomayor Sonia Maria Sotomayor is an Associate Justice at the Supreme Court of the United States. Appointed by President Barack Obama in May 2009 and confirmed in August 2009. She has the distinction of being its first Justice of Hispanic descent and the first Latina. Sotomayor was born in the Bronx, New York City, to Puerto Rican-born parents. Her father died when she was nine, and she was subsequently raised by her mother. Sotomayor graduated summer cum laude from Princeton University in 1976 and received her JD from Yale Law School in 1979, where she was an editor at the Yale Law Journal. She worked as an assistant district attorney in New York for four and a half years before entering private practice in 1984. She played an active role on the boards of directors for the Puerto Rican Legal Defense, an education fund, the State of New York Mortgage Agency, and the New York City Campaign Finance Board. Sotomayor was nominated to the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York by President George H. W. Bush in 1991. Confirmation followed in 1992. In 1997, she was nominated by President Bill Clinton to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit. Her nomination was slowed by the Republican majority in the United States Senate, but she was eventually confirmed in 1998. On the Second Circuit, Sotomayor heard appeals in more than 3,000 cases and wrote about 380 opinions. Sotomayor has taught at the New York University School of Law and Columbia Law School. In May 2009, President Barack Obama nominated Sotomayor to the Supreme Court following the retirement of Justice David Souter. Her nomination was confirmed by the Senate in August 2009 by a vote of 68-31. While on the court, Sotomayor has supported the informal liberal bloc of justices when they divide along the commonly perceived ideological lines. During her tenure on the Supreme Court, Sotomayor has been identified with concern for the rights of defendants, calls for reform of the criminal justice system, and making impassioned dissents on issues of race, gender and ethnic identity, including Shoot v. Bam and Utah v. Streif. Early Life Sonia Maria Sotomayor was born in the New York City borough of the Bronx. Her father was Van Sotomayor, from the area of Santos, San Juan, Puerto Rico, and her mother was Selena Baez, an orphan from the neighborhood of Santa Rosa in Lajas, a still mostly rural area on Puerto Rico's southwest coast. The two left Puerto Rico separately, met, and married during World War II after Selena served in the Women's Army Corps. Juan Sotomayor had a third-grade education, did not speak English, and worked as a tool and dye worker. Selena Baez worked as a telephone operator and then a practical nurse. Sonia's younger brother, Juan Sotomayor, later became a physician and university professor in the Syracuse, New York, area. Sotomayor was raised a Catholic and grew up in Puerto Rican communities in the South Bronx and East Bronx. She self-identifies as a New Yorican. The family lived in a South Bronx tenement before moving in 1957 to the well-maintained, racially and ethnically mixed, working-class Bronxdale Houses housing project in Soundview. Her relative proximity to Yankee Stadium led to her becoming a lifelong fan of the New York Yankees. The extended family got together frequently and regularly visited Puerto Rico during summers. Sonia grew up with an alcoholic father and a mother who was emotionally distant. She felt closest to her grandmother, who she later said gave her a source of protection and purpose. Sonia was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes at age 7, and began taking daily insulin injections. Her father died of heart problems at age 42, when she was 9 years old. After this, she became fluent in English. Sotomayor has said that she was first inspired by the strong-willed Nancy Drew book character, and then after her diabetes diagnosis led doctors to suggest a different career from detective. She was inspired to go into a legal career and become a judge by watching the Perry Mason television series. 
She reflected in 1998, I was going to college and I was going to become an attorney. And I knew that when I was 10. 10. That's no jest. Selena Sotomayor put great stress on the value of education. She bought the Encyclopedia Britannica for her children, something unusual in the housing projects. Despite the distance between the two, which became greater after her father's death and which was not fully reconciled until decades later, Sotomayor has credited her mother with being her life inspiration. For grammar school, Sotomayor attended Blessed Sacrament School in Soundview, where she was valedictorian and had a near-perfect attendance record. Although underage, Sotomayor worked at a local retail store and a hospital. Sotomayor passed the entrance tests for and then attended Cardinal Spellman High School in the Bronx. At Cardinal Spellman, Sotomayor was on the forensics team and was elected to the student government. She graduated as valedictorian in 1972. Meanwhile, the Bronx Dale houses had fallen victim to increasing heroin use, crime, and the emergence of the Black Spades gang. In 1970, the family found refuge by moving to Co-op City in the Northeast Bronx. College and Law School Sotomayor entered Princeton University on a full scholarship, by her own later description gaining admission in part due to her achievements in high school and in part because affirmative action made up for her standardized test scores not being fully comparable to those of other applicants. She would later say that there are cultural biases built into such testing and praise affirmative action for fulfilling its purpose to create the conditions whereby students from disadvantaged backgrounds could be brought to the starting line of a race many were unaware was even being run. She would describe her time at Princeton as a life-changing experience. Initially, she felt like a visitor landing in an alien country, as her exposure had been limited to the Bronx and Puerto Rico. Princeton had few women students and few Latinos. She was too intimidated to ask questions during her freshman year. Her writing and vocabulary skills were weak, and she lacked knowledge in the classics. She put in long hours in the library and over summers, worked with a professor outside of class, and gained skills, knowledge, and confidence. She became a moderate student activist, and co-chair of the Axion Puerto Ricanio organization which served as a social and political hub and sought more opportunities for Puerto Rican students. She worked in the admissions office, traveling to high schools, and lobbying on behalf of her best prospects. As an activist, Sotomayor focused on faculty hiring and curriculum. Since Princeton did not have a single full-time Latino professor nor any class on Latin American studies, a meeting with University President William G. Bowen in her sophomore year saw no results, leading to Sotomayor's saying in a New York Times story at the time that, Princeton is following a policy of benign neutrality and is not making substantive efforts to change. So, Axion Puerto Ricanio filed a formal letter of complaint in April 1974 with the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare saying the school discriminated in its hiring and admission practices. Sotomayor wrote opinion pieces for the Daily Princetonian with the same theme. The university began to hire Latino faculty, and Sotomayor established an ongoing dialogue with Bowen. Sotomayor also successfully persuaded historian Peter Wynne to create a seminar on Puerto Rican history and politics. Sotomayor joined the Governance Board of Princeton's Third World Center and served on the university's Student Faculty Discipline Committee, which issued rulings on student infractions. She also ran an after-school program for local children and volunteered as an interpreter for Latino patients at Trenton Psychiatric Hospital, a history major. Sotomayor received almost all as in her final two years of college. Sotomayor wrote her senior thesis at Princeton on Luis Munoz Marine, the first democratically elected governor of Puerto Rico, and on the territory's struggles for economic and political self-determination. The 178-page work, La Historia Ciclica de Puerto Rico, the impact of the life of Luis Munoz Marin on the political and economic history of Puerto Rico, 
1930-1975, one honorable mention for the Latin American Studies Thesis Prize. As a senior, Sotomayor won the Pine Prize, the top award for undergraduates, which reflected both strong grades and extracurricular activities. In 1976, she was elected to Phi Beta Kappa and awarded an AB from Princeton, graduating summer cum laude. She was influenced by the then fashionable critical race theory, which would be reflected in her later speeches and writings. On August 14, 1976, just after graduating from Princeton, Sotomayor married Kevin Edward Noonan, whom she had dated since high school, in a small chapel at St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York. She used the married name Sonia Sotomayor de Noonan. He became a biologist and a patent lawyer. Sotomayor entered Yale Law School in the fall of 1976, once more on a scholarship. While she believes she again benefited from affirmative action to compensate for somewhat lower standardized test scores. A former dean of admissions at Yale has said that given her record at Princeton, it probably had little effect. At Yale she fit in well although she found there were again few Latino students. She was known as a hard worker, but she was not considered among the star students in her class. Yale General Counsel and Professor Jose A. Cabrains acted as an early mentor to her to successfully transition and work within the system. She became an editor of the Yale Law Journal and was also managing editor of the student-run Yale Studies in World Public Order publication. Sotomayor published a law review note on the effect of possible Puerto Rican statehood on the island's mineral and ocean rights. She was a semi-finalist in the Barristers' Union mock trial competition. She was co-chair of a group for Latin, Asian, and Native American students, and her advocacy to hire more Hispanic faculty was renewed. Following her second year, she gained a job as a summer associate with the prominent New York law firm Paul Weiss. Rifkind, Wharton, and Garrison. By her own later evaluation, her performance there was lacking. She did not receive an offer for a full-time position, an experience that she later described as a kick in the teeth, and one that would bother her for years. In her third year, she filed a formal complaint against the established Washington, D.C. law firm of Shaw, Pittman, Potts and Trowbridge for suggesting during a recruiting dinner that she was at Yale only via affirmative action. Sotomayor refused to be interviewed by the firm further and filed her complaint with a faculty student tribunal, which ruled in her favor. Her action triggered a campus-wide debate, and news of the firm's subsequent December 1978 apology made the Washington Post. In 1979, Sotomayor was awarded a JD from Yale Law School. She was admitted to the New York Bar the following year. Early Legal Career On the recommendation of Cabrains, Sotomayor was hired out of law school as an assistant district attorney under New York County District Attorney Robert Morganfoe starting in 1979. She said at the time that she did so with conflicted emotions. There was a tremendous amount of pressure from my community, from the Third World community, at Yale. They could not understand why I was taking this job. I'm not sure I've ever resolved that problem. It was a time of crisis-level crime rates and drug problems in New York. Morganthus staff was overburdened with cases, and like other rookie prosecutors. Sotomayor was initially fearful of appearing before judges in court. Working in the trial division, she handled heavy caseloads as she prosecuted everything from shoplifting and prostitution to robberies, assaults and murders. She also worked on cases involving police brutality. She was not afraid to venture into tough neighborhoods or endure squalid conditions in order to interview witnesses in the courtroom. She was effective at cross-examination and at simplifying a case in ways to which a jury could relate. In 1983 in her highest profile case she helped convict the Tarzan murderer. She felt lower-level crimes were largely products of socio-economic environment and poverty, but she had a different attitude about serious felonies. No matter how liberal I am, I'm still outraged by crimes of violence. Regardless of whether I can sympathize with the causes that lead these individuals to do these crimes, the effects are outrageous. Hispanic on Hispanic crime was of particular concern to her. The saddest crimes for me were the ones that my own people committed against each other. 
In general, she showed a passion for bringing law and order to the streets of New York, displaying special zeal in pursuing child pornography cases, unusual for the time. She worked 15-hour days and gained a reputation for being driven and for her preparedness and fairness. One of her job evaluations labeled her a potential superstar. Morgenthau later described her as smart, hard-working, and having a lot of common sense, and as a fearless and effective prosecutor. She stayed a typical length of time in the post and had a common reaction to the job. After a while, you forget there are decent, law-abiding people in life. Sotomayor and Noonan divorced amicably in 1983. They did not have children. She has said that the pressures of her working life were a contributing factor, but not the major factor, in the breakup. From 1983 to 1986, Sotomayor had an informal solo practice, dubbed Sotomayor and Associates, located in her Brooklyn apartment. She performed legal consulting work, often for friends or family members. In 1984, she entered private practice. Joining the commercial litigation practice group of Pavia and Harcourt in Manhattan as an associate. One of 30 attorneys in the law firm, she specialized in intellectual property litigation, international law, and arbitration. She later said, I wanted to complete myself as an attorney. Although she had no civil litigation experience, the firm recruited her heavily, and she learned quickly on the job. She was eager to try cases and argue in court, rather than be part of a larger law firm. Her clients were mostly international corporations doing business in the United States. Much of her time was spent tracking down and suing counterfeiters of Fendi goods. In some cases, Sotomayor went on site with the police to Harlem or Chinatown to have illegitimate merchandise seized. In the latter instance pursuing a fleeing culprit while riding on a motorcycle. She said at the time that Pavier and Harcourt's efforts were run, much like a drug operation, and the successful rounding up of thousands of counterfeit accessories in 1986 was celebrated by Fendi Crush, a destruction by garbage truck event at Tavern on the Green. At other times, she dealt with dry legal issues such as grain export contract disputes. In a 1986 appearance on Good Morning America that profiled women 10 years after college graduation, she said that the bulk of law work was drudgery, and that while she was content with her life, she had expected greater things of herself coming out of college. In 1988 she became a partner at the firm. She was paid well, but not extravagantly. She left in 1992 when she became a judge. In addition to her law firm work, Sotomayor found visible public service roles. She was not connected to the party bosses that typically picked people for such jobs in New York. And indeed she was registered as an independent. Instead, District Attorney Morgenthau, an influential figure, served as her patron. In 1987, Governor of New York Mario Cuomo appointed Sotomayor to the board of the State of New York Mortgage Agency, which she served on until 1992 as part of one of the largest urban rebuilding efforts in American history. The agency helped low-income people get home mortgages and to provide insurance coverage for housing and AIDS hospices. Despite being the youngest member of a board composed of strong personalities, she involved herself in the details of the operation and was effective. She was vocal in supporting the right to affordable housing, directing more funds to lower-income homeowners and in her skepticism about the effects of gentrification, although in the end she voted in favor of most of the projects. Sotomayor was appointed by Mayor Ed Koch in 1988 as one of the founding members of the New York City Campaign Finance Board, where she served for four years. There she took a vigorous role in the board's implementation of a voluntary scheme wherein local candidates received public matching funds in exchange for limits on contributions and spending and agreeing to greater financial disclosure. Sotomayor showed no patience with candidates who failed to follow regulations, and was more of a stickler for making campaigns follow those regulations than some of the other board members. She joined in rulings that fined, audited, or reprimanded the mayoral campaigns of Koch, David Dinkins, and Rudy Giuliani, based upon another recommendation from Cabrains. 
Sotomayor was a member of the board of directors of the Puerto Rican Legal Defense and Education Fund from 1980 to 1992. There she was a top policymaker who worked actively with the organization's lawyers on issues such as New York City hiring practices, police brutality, the death penalty, and voting rights. The group achieved its most visible triumph when it successfully blocked a city primary election on the grounds that New York City Council boundaries diminished the power of minority voters. During 1985 and 1986, Sotomayor served on the board of the Maternity Center Association, a Manhattan-based non-profit group which focused on improving the quality of maternity care. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?